So now we're going to do a quick 10 things we don't know about Clarence Brown. All right. I'm just going to go down the list. 10 things. You just, whatever comes to mind first. All right. What's your favorite color? Red. Okay. And what is your favorite? Do you have a favorite actress that you like? Sanaa Lathan. Why? She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I see on TV, my wife would be like, nigga, you look girlfriend. I'd be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, um, number three, what's the worst thing a woman could wear? Um, flats. <laughs> no, it's not even flats. I like women with flats, and that's fine, but you see some of the women with flats look like it's newspaper thin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where you, you barely even see the little string that comes between the toes. <laughs> And yeah, I don't really like that because I feel like the women that wear those, they, they're not worried about their feet being clean. It's just not, it's not a good look for women, you know, when they wear the, I'm not saying the flats, flats are fine. Because, yeah. Flip flops fine, please. I'm talking about <laughs> flats to wear, you can you can barely see the flat. You know what I'm talking about? I've seen those. Yeah. The, the shoes you get at like the, the, the corner store. Yeah, you see, they walking down, you, you walk in the restaurant, you see the women, they just... Okay. <laughs> so the worst thing to wear is flat. What's the best thing on a woman? Oh, man. Just a nice dress, man. I like a classy looking lady. I like a lady that looks like she was kept, like she's clean, like she's confident. You know what I mean? Those things attract me. I find them attractive. So if you keep yourself fucked and you're clean and you know you look good, carry yourself like you know you look good. Now, you don't have to be just like snooty with it or whatever, but just know that, hey, you know, I'm a well-kept woman, you know, I'm, um, I'm not feeling myself, but, you know, I just know that I'm a beautiful woman, I'm going to let the world know that I'm going to keep your head high and walk in confidence. All right. Number five. If I could tell my 10 years self some advice right now, what would it be? Your 10 years younger self, what advice would you give? I would give my 10 year self to the advice to uh, stay focused on what it is that you feel is your passion. You know, when I was young, when I was 10 years younger, I didn't know what it was that I was passionate about. I just knew that I wanted to do something to be successful at it. You know what I mean? So as life progressed, then I started to find um, a lot more skills in myself, things that I do that affect other people, that I do well and I don't, know, I don't even try. You know what I mean? So when it comes to like motivating a person or just encouraging or inspiring a person, I felt like that was something I did naturally. You know what I mean? So even with my friends, anybody, my wife, family members, they'll tell you, like when I'm talking to you, like I'm always trying to give you some advice. Yes. I'm always trying to tell you something positive, trying to uplift you in some way, because that's something I do naturally. You know what I mean? So that's probably what I would tell my younger self to do. Let's stay focused on what it is that you feel is your passion and worth that. Because, I mean, I work, I have a day job, mm -hmm. but this is my passion, you know what I mean? Chopping it up with you, the shared experiences, talking back and forth with you and anybody else, that's yes. something I feel, I feel is my passion. Mm -hmm. And the people who watch, I hope that they'll gain some uh, motivation and gain some inspiration from watching me and, and feel like, hey, they can do it just as well as I, if not better than me. Mm -hmm. and that's what I want them to do. All right, so, we talked to 10 years younger self. Now, you're on an island, you got to break three things you have to have, and what are they on the island? My wife. Good choice. Um, that's one. Gotta bring her. She ain't. Uh, not like me. Uh. Um, let me see. Probably some money. My wife, some money. And I don't even know what the third thing is. Like, if I'm on an island, all I need is some food. It depends. It, it, okay, okay, okay. okay. But like, if the island doesn't have anything like one of the deserted islands, I'll take my wife, food and water. Okay. And I feel like we'll be good. <laughs> if it's on an island where I can purchase things, you know what I mean? Then I'm going to take my wife, some money, and I feel like I still need to be good. Yeah, I'll say that's the island I think we all want to be on right there. <laughs> I'll go over that island right now. Yeah. All right, so we stranded on the island now. Um, never leave home without. My phone. <laughs> My phone, my wallet, and my keys. I do a three-point inspection. I told you about it right there. That's right, you did. As soon as I hit the door, before I lock it, I wear keys, phone, wallet. Okay, cool. Now close and lock the door. Mm. Can't leave home without it. All right, cool then. All right. Now, you're a man. Um, <laughs> what's the worst line 
you've ever heard from a woman to try and talk to you? Well, you know, I got dreads. Right? Yeah. The worst line I've heard is, oh, um, who do your hair? <laughs> but it don't mean to be, but see, it's difficult. You know, some women that ask me who do your hair, it don't mean nothing. But then you have other women that you can hear in their voice, it's some kind of thirst, some kind of dehydration setting in, you know what I mean? Where they be like, well, who do your hair? And that's the look that goes with it. And then, um, and I be like my wife. They be like, oh, okay. <laughs> they be gone. <laughs> so I mean, it don't. It's not for everybody, but just for me, just to have dreads and kind of keeping up with it. They be like, oh, be okay, look real nice. Who do? And I say my wife. They be gone. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So um, nine, you knew it was love when? Oh man, I knew it was love with my wife probably when. When I, when I didn't have any money and I was about to get evicted from my apartment. It was a time when I was going through school and I was doing an internship and it didn't go well because they had a background check on me, but they ended up getting like some clearance from out of Texas. You know what I mean? A guy had like a uh, failed drug test for cocaine and all this stuff. And I'm like, hold on, this ain't me. They got you. Oh, right. man. But because of it, it slowed down the whole process of my internship. So then, my job had got backed up because the internship was going to be during the time when I was working and then uh, just messed everything up. So at that point, I had to be evicted out of my because I didn't have money to pay the rent. And my wife, she, she just went ahead. She jumped right into action, sprung right into action. I'm like, look, you know, my aunt's got a little extra room over here, St. P. And, you know, she loves you. She'll allow, allow you to stay there. And it's right up the street from my house. And it's really kind of like I was living with, with her and her mom. Mm -hmm. But I did have the other room at her where I could stay, and that was like a huge blessing because really, you know, I was at my lowest point. Like, it wasn't my fault, but still, it was like, you know, she could have just been out of there, you know what I mean? But she stuck by me, and she looked out as far as putting me in a spot where I could live and have room over my head, you know, and among all the other things that I saw in her, that was one thing I was like, okay, I know she definitely, she got me something happens to me and she'll be there to take care of me. And that was one big thing for me to say, okay, well, I get money to put a ring on, I'm gonna lock it down. Wow. That's a good story right there. Now, um, last question I gotta ask you. <laughs> what was the best advice anyone ever gave you? What was the best advice that you carried to this day in your life? Like, yeah. I'm like, look, I mean, I left somebody out, somebody gonna be mad. I'm what I told you. You know what I mean? Oh, man, I, I remember going to Atlanta and speaking with a brother named Devin T. Robinson. Um, they call him Egypt. He's been all over, all over the world. He's been on BBT, CNN, Apollo. But I wouldn't even see that brother. What up, Devin? <laughs> nah, man, I wouldn't even speak with that brother one of um, one Saturday, I believe, I drove to Atlanta from Tampa just to talk to him, you know what I mean? And he's doing a lot of things I'm doing as far as public speaking, motivational speaking. Okay. Um, he's real big on the AIDS awareness. So, oh, wow. I mean, he gave me so much advice when it comes to, like, if you want to actually do it, as far as, like, trying to be a public speaker or trying to be out and motivate other people, like, he gave me so much advice as far as, like, where to go, shortening up my videos to choosing different titles. To, even the male translations came from him. Oh, wow. The title male translations came from him. He was telling me uh, to actually make it a website because I was going to do the male point of views as a website. And he was like, you know, short it down and do male translations. And male translations was actually going to be a title of a workshop that he was inspiring me to do. Oh, wow. So where it was going to be like, you know, the workshop was going to be the things men say versus the thing, what women hear. Oh, you know I, mean? I like that. So we gotta set that, that up. Yeah, we, we, we can do that. <laughs> We're gonna set that but up. But I just wanna make sure I give him his credit because in that, in that maybe an hour, 45 minutes, we were sitting there in a restaurant similar to this one like in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and he was just giving me so much advice, and he had told me, like, I was the last person he was ever going to kind of give advice and give guidance because there have been guys in the past that had taken his advice and not done much with it. So he was like, after me, he's not going to do it anymore. Wow. So again, blessing. 
Yeah, definitely. You know I mean? For him to have been on the level where he's been already out in the public eye, he's got a lot of good responses. He's taking the time to sit with me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and just give me the, the, the game and kind of give me some leadership on what needs to be done for me to be successful. And, um, you know, that was one of the things, like I said, from shortening out my videos to names of workshops to where to go to, to kind of get out there at different conferences and different um, events. All these different type of things. He, he just gave me all that advice. I had a little book that writing it all down. You know, so he gave me so much advice and I appreciate him to this day. Wow. And anything I can do to help him, man. He really looked out for me. That's all right. I was gonna run with two questions. I was gonna ask him, what's the last book you read? <laughs> I just wanna keep there's some things I just wanna know. Oh man, truthfully, I can't even say. I can't even say. And that's bad. I'm gonna say that too. That's Fair bad. question. Yeah. Probably newspaper. Well, at least you. Okay. Well, you read that. There you I go. Mean, I, you know, I should read more often, and I'm trying to get more into the reading. Although, mm-hmm. honestly, I haven't been reading as much as I should. I I respect that. I've been doing that too. So I need to read. Yes, reading is. And you know, fundamental. I'll, I'll be the first to say you need to read more. I need to read more. Me too. Me too. I you know. Um, <laughs> the thing, it ain't really me, you know. <laughs> yeah, you had to throw that out there, but I'm making that out. <laughs> well, what's your favorite movie, though? Favorite movie My of all time? My favorite movie is Dead Presidents. Oh, with uh, Lorenz Tate and, uh, oh, wow. And it had some gems in that. Like, it showed you how life was for black men at that time, the struggles that they went through, both with other black men and then just trying to be successful in in America. You know what I mean? And the struggles that they went through from, you know, when he had a baby and trying to you know, take the legit route and be a butcher and then that fell off and him trying to find other ways to make a living for himself and create a situation for his family and then having, you know what I mean, it's just a lot of different stories that so many people live in that movie, you know what I mean, from the Vietnam vets to, you know, to the pushes and the number men yeah. to, the, you know, the Black Panthers. I gotta, I gotta run people. back and watch that one again, that's, that's a classic. Favorite. And the other one, it's like 1A, it's higher, higher learning. Ah, I love that one too. I mean, that's my, those are my two for all time favorite movies. Well, Mr. Bill Translations and POV, I mean, I, it's been a pleasure. Of course, Clarence, you know, I mean, you, you're inspiring. I see, I see where you're trying to go with it. I see what you're doing out here. You're, you're setting an example that's a completely different tone. You know, so I know there's a lot more to come. So where can we find you? Where can everybody find you? I mean, you know, I have the on YouTube, the Mail Translations podcast, also videos on Mail Point of Views. It's the same place on YouTube. You can Google Clarence Brown Mail Point of Views or Google Clarence Brown Mail Translations. You'll find all my videos there. Also, I have a webpage, mailpointofviews.com, so y'all go there if you want to find me or, you know, just check that page out. I really appreciate that. And there's more to come. There's more to more come, to come, definitely. I see a lot of things happening right here, you It's know? all in the effort to show people the guys coming up behind me that they can do it. You know what I mean? They can, because this is the role that's travel for me. This isn't something that I just pulled up and just said, I'm going to be a radio personality, a talk show host, or whatever. Those are not things that I... From birth, felt like this is my call. You just follow on your inner voice. Right. And you have a voice that's telling you. And God has put everybody on earth to do something. I all have a purpose. When you find that purpose, it's one of the best days in your life. But then you have a direction to where you need to be going, where you need to where you're calling. So I feel like this is the area where I can make the most impact on men like myself and then also help other women to understand this. Well, all right. Uh, wow, we're down here in beautiful downtown Tampa, Zelda's Cafe. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm about to go ahead and finish knocking down this brunch. And uh, <laughs> and this is Joy Banks from That's Joy. Yes, I'm out there. You know what? I'm gonna. We're going to be doing some more stuff together. I really yeah, enjoy Black Girls Rock, too. Like, we're gonna, we're, I mean, this guy right here, I'm... Wow. Uh, you can make me blush. Chill, chill, chill. <laughs> uh, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all taking the time. I did this video for all the people who told me, yo, they want to see more of the inner clearance and see, you know, reasons why I do what I do and what my mission is behind the videos, the podcasts, and all that. So I appreciate y'all taking the time. I'll thank you. I appreciate it. We're out.